watching Coffee Brew. So, um, hi, I'm Obadiah, and I am a recovering chef. Um, I'm 20, 20 odd years of service industry, a little shy of that probably. Um, and I've worked everything from uh, your lowest dive bar to your finest dining. I've done a little bit of everything. Um, uh, my last last job before all this craziness happened, I was uh, I found this perfect little unicorn job, man. It was Monday through Friday, no nights, no weekends, no holidays, paid time off, health benefits, dental, all the like a unicorn. And I still got to cook food. It was incredible. Um, but then furloughs happened and COVID destroyed our industry and um, I had to move on to other things. Took a couple line cook jobs uh, between then and now and those didn't last and here I am. Um, my sober date is seven seven seventeen, um, so a little over three years now. Um, and you know, it's it's weird because I haven't actually told my story in a while. I don't even think about it anymore. It's I've gotten to a nice comfort zone within my sobriety where it's just like I'm just living my best life now, and that's just not a thought. Um, yeah, due to all the isolation that's going on and and not being able to go out, um, you know, I'm not going to meetings as much as I would like to or at all, frankly, frankly. Um, but yeah, I think like like most of us, uh, my drinking within the industry just was it got out of hand. It was um, every night. It was you know rails at the bar and and uh, uh, going out with your sous chefs and your chefs and your bar managers and and just and that was every night. That was just you did your prep, you worked your station, you cleaned your station, and you got shitty every single night and my last my last drink um was not like any other i mean it was like every other single it wasn't like this weird eye-opening experience or like i've like ended up in jail and killed somebody and blew up a school bus like it, none of that happened it was just another night out with the boys you know uh i remember it as best as it was described to me um just we went out to a bar the bar the bar manager my chef my sous chef and i thank god that i had enough uh brain power to realize that i couldn't drive that that night and we did the next best thing and we threw me in the trunk and they drove me home um and i woke the next day to my five-year-old well he's now then he would have been two my two-year-old uh son climbing out of his room I've over the little, you know, not a cage, not a cage, but the, the fence thing, right? He was climbing over that and he, he got into my cigarettes and he ripped them all apart. And like, that's not, and I was too hung over to do anything about it. And that's just not the dad I want to be. That's not the person I want to be. That's not how I want to show up in life. Um, and I put my foot down and it was, okay, this is enough. I got to do something. And I just, you know, carried on life for the next couple of weeks. Just like, I'm just not drinking. If I could get through today, that's that's all I got to worry about. And then I'll figure tomorrow out. And then tomorrow came and all right, I just got to get through today. And then I'll figure tomorrow out. Um, and I just kept going with that. And I'm just, you know, I, I pulled the, yeah, I'm not drinking anymore, guys. Just, and then they're like, yeah, okay, we'll see you tomorrow. You know, and, and that was just kind of... That's what it was. And eventually, like trying to repair something of a relationship with my kid's mom and, and trying to make that whole thing work and and just wanting to be able to show up in my kid's life and not be annoyed by the two-year-old who's just being a two-year-old. Um, I, I, had to, I had to make a change. Um, but I knew that my situation, our situation... Uh, was a little bit more unique um, because of, I mean, it's almost as bad as like working in a liquor store and trying to be sober or, you know, like it's just, it's just, you're always around it. There's no getting away from it. Um, even if you go into meetings, even if you're doing, if you're going to be in this industry, you have to come to the understanding that you are going to be around 
alcohol. You are going to be around drugs. It's just, you, if you're trying to smoke, quit smoking cigarettes, you're going to be around cigarettes. So it just t- makes that, those step takings just that much more difficult. Um, this industry isn't for the faint of heart and getting sober in this industry is certainly not for the faint of heart. Uh, it takes a special breed to do both, um, which I like absolutely applaud all of you for uh, or any of you who, who are able to do what we're trying to do here. Um, Cause I, I know like everybody else, it's not, it's not easy. Um, I guess along my path, um, uh, you know, things just started kind of falling in line. It's kind of hard to explain. It's just one thing would kind of like point you in one direction and you're like, okay, I, I'm listening now. I got, you know, I'm not fogged up with all the alcohol. So I'm going to go do that. That, that annoying little tap on your shoulder and I think you all know what I'm talking about. You know, it's, it's there. It's always tapping you, trying to nudge you in the right direction, but finally I'm in a place in my life where I can actually listen. Um, and I started doing the next best thing. And I, I, some of you may know, I, I started this online group called last call. Um, I unfortunately have not been very, uh, involved in it. I've actually, uh, passed the torch uh, to Melinda here. She's going to be taking care of that site uh, far better than I have in the past, however long. I've got other things I've been focusing on, and it may be selfish, but we all need to take time for ourselves to do other things. Um, but yeah, I, I just I knew that I knew that I couldn't be alone. I I knew that there had to be other people out there um, that were seeking the same thing that I was sobriety within this industry. Um, and so I created this, this is an online group just in, in hopes to maybe find somebody to find something. Um, and turns out there's a lot more people in the Twin Cities here than I had anticip- anticipated um, who were interested in sobriety or sobriety within the industry. Um, and, you know, the, the page kind of took off um, as far as like a local page goes, you know, like we're not hitting like 10 million subscribers and like people you know whatever it's for what it is in the cities it's a it's done pretty well a lot of people have gone on there and i've seen stories that have like just you know pulled my heart out like i like the the way that people are able to like express themselves freely and like not have any judgment there's never been anybody like oh you fucking pussies you you shut up and go clean the walk-in and then drink some cocaine like nobody's like that nobody and it's i don't know um and that was one of those one of those things that was like all right um i'm doing something right here i don't know what it is it felt good for me but it's helping other people and you know as far as like you know aa goes or meetings go that's kind of part of it right it's like passing the torch and like helping other people helping you get out of your own shit by helping other people to mess with their messy lives um it really kind of you know, makes you think about all the problems that you think that you have and kind of switches them down when you have to start helping somebody else with their problems. Um, and, you know, people started reaching out to me on, online and, and, oh, hey, you run that last call thing. And, and hey, I really appreciate that. And, and man, I don't know. It just warmed my heart and made me want to continue doing what I was doing. And then it's like accountability too, right? Because if I create this thing, and then guess what i'm drinking again then it's that doesn't really work you know and then people lose their faith and in, in the process and people you know well if, if this guy can fuck off and drink then i'm gonna fuck off and drink too and so having that kind of has like this little backbone background backbone you know helping me at some of my darker times because they don't go away you know like you just learn how to manage them better um and yeah. Um, then, you know, then what happens next is sort of like it's the it's the harder topic to talk about when you're talking with service industry people, because I know we're all a bunch of uh, cross burning fucking atheist, you know, anti 
this and anti that and fuck the system and whatever. But I found God. And I found God through a fucking YouTube channel about electric skateboards of all places. Right. So this weird turn of events led me to this person, led me to this thing, led me to this thing, led me to this thing. And I ended up walking into church one day and I got my mom in here. She's watching along. She used to drag us along to, to, uh, church. And it was not, it's not for me. It was never for me. It was never part of the pet plan. It was never part of anything that I ever, you know, but I, but like I said, I started listening. Right. And that, that little nudge was like, Hey man, I know you like your YouTube videos and I know you like your little, your little skateboards, but you really need to go check this out because I got a message for you. And I did. And it was, you know, I could feel my skin crawling, walking through those front doors and, and, I sat down, uh, you know, I got to meet the, the pastor and cool dude, you know, he's like, he's like me, he's, you know, covered in tattoos, he rides skateboards, he, you know, he, you know, he's just a, he's a cool dude. And the moment I sat down in that chair, as probably better than you can hear me now, because I know, I know everything's kind of staticky and whatever, but as clear as clear as day, I heard, I heard that voice that said, you know, I, I've been here all along and I love you. And there was no going back after that. Um, so that's been like, like the, I don't know, it's been the backbone of what keeps me going. You know, I, I constantly, I pay attention to those nudges. Uh, you know, we say in, in the church, we say, uh, pay attention to the tension because that's where God is. And then we say, uh, you know, what's God saying to you and what are you going to do about it? And I like that because it puts a little bit of an attitude spin on it. And I got plenty of that going around. So uh to me to me it was like a, a challenge all right fucker what's you know here's my message now go do something with it you know go tell somebody about this go you know go help somebody go go get out of your head go do something um and that's been kind of like my driving point on 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 my sobriety whenever i'm like not feeling it not you know down about whatever could be going on fucking political bullshit fucking the state of the country the you know like i fought tooth and nail to get my kid in my life uh you know like i went through a lot of shit over these last couple of years anything things that could have made anybody anybody crumble but because i had faith in my in my back pocket and you know the groups that i had my commitments to um I, there was no fear in in moving forward there was i like i knew that i was on the right path um and here i am you know a little over three years sober doing my thing um sobriety hasn't made me a billionaire but what i got is pretty fucking dope you know it's not i don't got the problems i used to have you know my and I'm full of those little kitschy little sayings or whatever, but my honest to God, I live by some of them, right? So like my worst, my worst day sober is better than my best day drunk or however that saying goes, you know, like I wouldn't trade anything for what I have now to for one day, one hour back in, in, in drinking or, or in my, my using state, I wouldn't give any of it up. I have a healthy relationship with a, the woman I love. And like, that's huge, right? It's like every relationship previous to that has been like drug and alcohol induced, uh, filled with, uh, I don't know, uh, it's not healthy relationships. And now I've got something where it's like, well, I can't run away and go to the bar and, and fucking hide in a glass bottle to, to void out my emotions. I have to face that shit, you know? And she's awesome. She holds, holds me accountable. She's like, hey, dude, you're fucking up. You know, and we have that kind of relationship, a relationship that I would have never had uh, in, in my using days. I would easily just like, well, fuck you. I'm going to go take shots and do cocaine and I'll see you in six days. You know, there's no running away now. Oh, we're at the five minute mark. Um, so, yeah. Uh, what do I got now? I got faith. I got healthy relationships. Um Fuck, what else do I need? Oh, I got my ma. She's cool. 
she's crafty. Um, I got family, you know, like I got, I got relationship, like I'm, I got a relationship with my brother after the first time in like forever, like him and I actually talk. It's not that we didn't talk before, but now we like actively talk. So that's really cool. Um, you know, like my bills are paid. I don't got to worry that I don't have it anymore. So I guess that's, I don't got no like one liner to end it with. Shit's good this way. Oh, okay. Food? What do you mean food? I, I don't, I like, do you know what I eat? It's fucking impossible burgers from Burger King. Like, <laughs> uh, life, wait, in your life, what are you up to? Oh, what am I up to? Um, so this actually, this is, you know, there's a reason that my setup is looking pretty good. And, you know, <laughs> so I'm, I'm working on like a YouTube channel, um, which is pretty cool. It's something that's like, I never thought I'd, I knew I always kind of wanted to do it, but I never really like cared enough to do it. So like, I'm out here buying like fancy lights and shit. And like, I'm bouncing like, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, I got you know, <laughs> uh, uh, the, the show is go, it's on, on YouTube. It's just my name, Obadiah O'Connor at, at youtube.com. And, uh, the show is called, uh, shut up and shoot. And it is about using your, uh, your mobile devices to do things like this, uh, creating content, video, photography, editing. Um, and we're going to sprinkle in some productivity tips and tricks and techniques, things like that. Um, you know, I, I do a lot of, uh, mobile photography, you know, I bust out all these cool little lenses and things like that, that attach to your, your cameras. And they got my little sound setups and all that fun shit. And I, it's my goal to teach people how to like start with your native apps, but then how do you exceed, excel at that shit? Um, cause I know a lot of us, I mean, I'm, what's it going back to restaurants I don't want to, honestly, I really don't. I don't, I, uh, I'm going to school in the fall, um, uh, for, for photography, for, um, uh, for video, for business. Um, I've got family that have been doing video marketing for a lot of years. I'm probably going to reach out to them and, and talk to them, see how they're, what they're doing with their lives and, and how do I connect to that? Um, uh, I work at Amazon now, you know, the, the furlough fucked me up and, I, and I'm packing bags. Like I'm a grocery getter. It's a um, fulfillment center associate is the is what they call it. Really, it's just I put shit in bags. Actually, it's like a giant walk-in and dry storage, and they're actually utilizing my abilities to organize the whole the whole building. They're like, whatever Obi says goes, because y'all been fucking up for too long. So that's actually kind of cool. It's like a big giant walk-in. So. Um, last words, um, get it, just fucking get it. You know, like if this is something that you want, if this is something that you need, fucking get it, go after it. It ain't gonna, it's not going anywhere. If you want it, it's right there. It's all within reach. It's not a thousand miles away. It's right fucking there. And you just got to put the work in to get it done. Uh, reach out to your friends, reach out to your family. Uh, you know, if, if you're struggling that bad, get, get into some therapy, get into some, you know, get, use your, get on medication, see a therapist, <laughs> go to, you know, find faith if you can, if that's the thing that you're into, I'm not going to push that on anybody, but it's definitely helped me a whole lot. So all those things, use your medication, see a therapist. <laughs>